Hi Precalc friends, Mr. Thompson here with another video. Hope you're enjoying them. We're enjoying making them. So we're going to find the exact values, not the rounded decimals, of all the zeros of this polynomial. So let's use our calculator this time to help us. So we're going to come over here and I'm going to start on the calculator. I'm going to add a graph. Okay. I'm going to type in my graph. So we're going to get x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 11x squared plus 24 oops, plus 24x minus 12 okay now I've got this graph here now, as I look, I notice that right away that I've got a double zero right there on the graph. So that's interesting to me. Okay, I also notice that these don't seem to be following on integers. But let's use that double zero at two and see if we can figure out um, if that helps us. Let's make first of all, let's make sure it's actually at two. So when I go to menu, I'm just going to trace and plug in two here just to make sure it is at zero. And it is. So at two, we have a double root at zero. So now I come back over here to my problem and see if I can help us. If that can help us. So. In my problem, I've got a double zero at two. So let's go ahead, if I've got a zero at two, that means x minus two should be a factor. If that's a factor, it should divide out in synthetic division. So let's check. So two, I get one, negative one, negative 11, 24, and negative 12. Okay, one, drop down to one, multiply by two, add, multiply by two, add, multiply by two, add, multiply by 2, and it worked. So 2 is a remainder. Now notice, I still have a cubic polynomial here, because this was quartic, and this is now cubic, because I divided by a linear. So, But since the 2 over here was a double root, I can go ahead and do synthetic division again. I'll drop the 1 down, multiply, add, multiply, add, Oh, three, sorry, okay, six, negative three, negative six, and zero. And it worked, okay? So I now have reduced this quartic equation twice, not just by x minus two once, but by x minus two twice. I've factored that x minus two out two different times because it's a double root. That means that my function is now x minus two times x minus two, and I have this, quotient remaining. So x squared plus 3x minus 3. And that is now my factored function. So I'm going to bring it back down here. And I know that now x minus, because of the factoring, x minus 2 has to equal 0, which means x equals 2. x minus 2 has to equal 0, which means x equals 2. There's the double root that we saw on the graph. But this piece is a little more interesting because now I have x squared plus 3x minus 3 equals 0. And that is a quadratic that doesn't factor. So we'll have to use the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You can sing the song if you like. And we get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 12 is 21 over 2. And there are our other two zeros. Now, notice I have zeros at x equals 2, which is a double root, and zeros at negative 3 plus or minus root 21 over 2, which is an ugly number. But that's what these two numbers are right here. So if I were to find this 0, and this zero, this zero on the left, the negative zero on the graph will be negative three minus the square root of 21 over two, whatever decimal that is. And the zero on the right would be, just to the left of one would be negative three plus the square root of 21 divided by two. Okay, so there we go. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.